Until recently, I f it thought that it was Matt Groening that had completely recovered from whatever was making him act so strangely. But during the Dead Bart incident, it had an effect him on his normal life afterwards. Recent claims of the employee who found the Dead Bart video, however, indicate that Matt Groening went on another similar incident 10 years ago. It was the summer of 1999 and Futurama had recently premiered. Matt was working on two shows at the time and started to show signs of stress. When he announced that he was working on another episode that would be 100% of his own writing, this terrified some of the staff who worked on both shows. But as they were both hesitant to bring up the dead Bart and the Futurama crew, saw no reason to, re to reject Matt's idea. An early version of it was made and the employee who found dead Bart managed to make a digital copy of this as well. The episode was called Not Long Enough. The episode started with Fry, Leah, and Bender making a delivery for Planet Express. They never revealed exactly what they were delivering or where they were going, and everyone seemed to be upset about the unexplained event that happened recently. Leela and Bender were angry at Fry, who kept on apologizing but was coldly rejected by his friends. Eventually, he reached a planet which seemed to have only one house surrounded by empty, desolated fields on the sides. They all knocked on the door and a grotesque alien that seemed to be very old answered. He took the box without a word and opened it. And he took a knife out of it and stabbed himself. The Planet Express crew did not seem to find this odd or surprising. They simply left the body on the ground and walked back to their ship in silence. The next scene was at the Planet Express ship, flying through space. A dissonant piece of music made extremely loud instruments playing very slow tune played in the background. While the ship flew into the air in the empty black space, they finally reached Earth and landed on a deserted New 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 York. Fry then started apologizing again as they walked through the empty streets, as there was no sign of Planet Express building. But Leela and Bender then glared at him in silence. Fry gave up and separated from his friends. He walked for quite a while, never encountering a single person. He reached for the cryogenics building, where he, they had been frozen. He looked inside and began to cry. The crying went on for about a few minutes before he entered the building. Fry went into one of the tubes and set the timer on to a huge number of more or with more zeros than I could count. He unlocked himself in. The screen dated out and came back at the view of his entirely of, to, on, to Fry. The machine must have practically stopped working as parts of Fry were decaying. Bone was poking through his skin in several places. Fry mumbled, It's what I deserve, and climbed out of the freezing device. He was surreal in an indespicable place, where the huge variety of shapes and colors, but it wasn't bright or fanciful. It was much closer to faint colors you would see if your eyes are too hard. Fry started walking. The surreal void that seemingly to go on and on, he kept walking for a few minutes. The colors kept on making shapes. You could probably see the void he was going in. He kept walking for a few minutes. But of course, the colors will make you kind of make you out. But of course, none of them were present. After his long walk, Fry found a picture on the ground and it was completely out of place for his new environment. It looked like something drawn out of a Futurama style. It was a photo of himself, Leela, and, e and Bender. Fry looked at a few seconds before beginning to cry again. The picture soon turned into dust and Fry continued walking. The zoom zoomed out until Fry can no longer be seen until the colors blended together and turned into a solid black. The view co continued to zoom out until he sees a black tiny fragment of pupil in Fry's eye. His frozen body had fallen out of the freezing unit and lying in an abandoned room. He was drawn by the same hyperlistic style as Deb Bart's corpse on the Simpsons episode, Deb Bart. Bender and Leela walked into the room and saw that Fry had done to himself and Leela said, He got what he deserved. She checked her watch and said, It looks like we need to leave for our next delivery. She took out a knife out of her pocket and put it in a plain cardboard box and headed towards the ship. And that, my little pretties, was uh, Not Long Enough, a Futurama creepypasta written by Kai Simpson. 
Uh, my final thoughts on the story. All right, I think I kind of have like a little bit of mixed feelings with this pasta. Now, I kind of remember, you know, a couple narrators have sat there and narrated the story. And this one is another story by, oh, excuse me, pardon me, was written by Kai Simpson. And I have to say, you know, this story, I do have some mixed feelings when it comes to this one. And I'm just going to be completely and utterly honest, so I am going to be doing so. So basically, I kind of like this story, but at the same time, I really don't. Like, the mainly the thing right here is, you know, um... Like, the grammar is pretty good and all that. Like, the grammar was good along with the sentence structuring. And it did have a really interesting storyline to for the Futurama episode. Which, I could definitely say Futurama has done some crazy stuff when it came to, you know, this. And I definitely have to say, you know, this is not completely out of the ordinary for Futurama to do, you know. To, you know, being frozen a cryogenic, um, well, tube or something and... Yeah, I definitely have to say, you know, Future, I believe Futurama did an episode of this. I'm not really sure, but I'm going to sit here and and say that I did have maybe a few, maybe a few problems with it. Not me. Well, one of them is kind of a major one, which I'll be getting to soon. Now, for one thing I'm going to really say was, you know, the, it has a pretty interesting concept. But I feel that it's kind of like a Dead Bar 2.0. I'm, I'm not trying to bash the offer in any way, shape, or form. That's, this is just me. Because, you know, I'm just saying. Like, it kind of did, um, well, had, um, it kind of did have a concept, but at the same time, it just really didn't. So, another thing I would want to point out was, you know, the you know, the episode was actually pretty good, but the mention of the creepypasta dead bar kind of, I don't know, really know what it is. And, you know, it kind of really took me off a bit of the story, you know, mentioning the creepypasta in a creepypasta, you know. I'm going to sit here and say right now that if you mention a creepypasta in a creepypasta, it just doesn't work that way. It just doesn't work, work because of this. So I definitely have to say... I just don't understand, you know, why this, um, why did the offer decide to sit there and, you know, mention Dead Bart? You know, I could understand one thing if, you know, if it's like a follow-up story, but at the same time, it just kind of didn't make sense for, you know, um, well, to sit there and add it, you know, the Dead Bart, you know, references. And the part that I definitely have to say was the hyperrealistic style as Bart's corpse from the episode Dead Bart, like, uh, that was kind of why I, you know, lost some interest in the story was because of that. Like, why mentioning something that happened in Dead Bart in this story, it just doesn't, it just didn't make the story good. And, you know, that was kind of why I lost interest in the story was because of that. Like, I would kind of hesitate to narrate this, but at the same time, I decided why not narrate this story because... A few people, from what I've seen, a couple people have narrated the story. I'm not a fan of this story. I'm just going to be honest. Like, I don't hate it. I just don't like it. Like, I'm okay if people like this story. Like, if they... Like, if any... Like, if you guys, for example, like this story, that is totally fine. If you don't like it, that's understandable. Like, I definitely have to say, this story was just, well... I really don't know. This story was just kind of, well, it just didn't really work for me. So it was actually one of the main reasons why um, this story kind of did, um, I kind of did lose interest in the story when, you know, when they mentioned the dead Bart stuff because it did, it wasn't really necessary to add that. Like, I know the pasta, like the story episode seemed to be pretty interesting, but I just didn't really like the fact that, you know, the hyperlistic, you know, corpse like Dead Bart was just mentioned in there. That's just, I don't, I don't really know. That's just kind of, you know, me losing interest in the story completely. It just didn't really work. And, you know, that's the only thing I have to say is it just did not work for this story. I did have some good things to say about it. Like the grammar was good and all that. 
I definitely have to say the episode had a good concept and all that, and I like it how it was going. But when it mentioned, you know, Dead Bart and all that, it... I just kind of lost, um, you know, all, you know, interest in the story. It just didn't really, um... I don't know. It just didn't sit well with me, and that's the only thing I'm going to say, is that it just didn't sit well with me. Now, I'm not trying to sound, you know, rude or anything, but I definitely have to say, this story was just... Uh, I don't know. The story was just didn't sit well with me. That's the main um, issue with this story. It just didn't sit well with me. And that's the main um, problem, I have to say. But other than that, I have to say, this story was not a bad story. It just, I don't know. It just didn't work very well with me. And that's just the main, you know, thing about it. So, okay. I'm not trying to say that, you know, the story was, you know, bad. It's not bad, but... The thing that kind of bothered me was, you know, the fact that Dead Bart, you know, Cree Pasta was mentioned and, you know, stuff was in there. It just didn't, it just didn't sit well with me. And that's the main issue, I have to say. But other than that, the story was not a bad Cree Pasta. It just, it just needed some work. So, yeah, that's just all I have to say. Now, what to make the story better, I would sit there and remove all the, I guess you could say, remove the... Remove the mentioning of Dead Bart, and yeah, the story would have been okay if it was had been to be edited out. But other than that, the story just didn't sit well with me. Although it's not a terrible story, I definitely have to say it's not a terrible story. It just didn't, it just didn't sit well with me at certain parts, and you know, that's the only reason why I kind of you know was hesitant to narrate this. But at the same time, you know, the story was not bad. It just I, I just had some mixed feelings when it came to, you know, the story. So, yeah. I'm gonna sit there and say this right now. And like I always continue to say, this is just simply my own personal opinion. And if you happen to disagree with me, that's fine too. We're all entitled to our own opinions in regards to these, um, creepypastas. And this is simply my own personal thoughts. My final reign of the story would have to be, I guess you could say, a, um... What is it? Oh, yeah, a... Um, I'm gonna give this one to be nice and give it a, a 6 out of 10. It's not a bad story or anything. It just didn't, uh, sit well with me. And I just wasn't really crazy on, you know, the, the fact that Dead Bart, you know, references were added in there. And they just weren't really necessary. So, that's the kind of the, that's the main reason why I was, didn't really, you know, didn't really like this story that much. And, you know, that's just... That's probably one of the only reasons why I was kind of hesitant to narrate the story. Because I just didn't really care for it that much. Like, I'm not saying that to be rude or anything. I'm just being completely honest. So I guess with that being the case, that being said, what did you guys think about this um, creepypasta? Did you all enjoy it? Did you all not? Also, what we have done person to help make this story a lot better? Feel free to leave me now with your thoughts down in the comment section down below. I'm the Queen of Lions. Thank you so much for watching today's episode. And if you happen to be brand new here on this channel, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe because I make brand new videos every single day. And don't forget to ring the bell for notifications so you will not miss an upload. And as always, please roll the outro because I'm out.